Mr. Speaker, two weeks ago, I took part in a reading of the U.S. Constitution in this chamber. It was a fitting tribute to the great social contract between the American people and our government. The Constitution is an exceptional document, and we have all taken an oath to defend it, and defend it we must. Too often, our Constitution is under attack by the liberal activist movement that seeks to achieve through the courts that which they cannot achieve at the ballot box. On the front line are the un unelected judges that disregard the words and meaning of the Constitution in favor of their own political and social views. They decide cases not on law and the facts, but on the outcome that they alone to believe to be the best policy. Roe v. Wade is an example of this sort of judicial activism at its worst. Together with other cases, the Roe Court created a fundamental right to abortion, even though a simple reading of the Constitution reveals no such right. As a result, unimaginable harm has occurred. In the short time that I have talked tonight, another baby has been aborted. That equals one abortion every two minutes, 3,300 abortions a day, or 1.2 million abortions a year. Mr. Speaker, I am unapologetically pro-life. I believe that the miracle of human life begins at conception. I believe that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, knit together by God in our mother's womb. I believe that every American is entitled to basic human rights, and I believe that I have an obligation to do everything I can to fight for the unborn, to prevent taxpayer money from funding abortions, and to protect our democratic system for the encroachment of an all-powerful judiciary. Let us use this 38th anniversary of Roe v. Wade as an occasion to reaffirm our beliefs and redirect ourselves to that cause.